you need to figure out what makes you excited and what's going to make you come into lab every day. I always want to come into lab because I want to bother them and ask them what they found out while I was gone. Um, so that excites me. My name is Colleen Murphy. I'm a professor of genomics and molecular biology at Princeton University. Are you doing germline stuff today? Uh, I'm actually doing uh, that for... I the goal of our research lab is to try to understand what are the molecular mechanisms that underlie aging. We use a small laboratory animal called C. elegans. So C. elegans is this uh, little worm. Um, it's not scary, it's very tiny. And the reason we use it is because 80% of its genes are shared with humans. By working on a problem like aging, there's also the hope that we can help other people down the road. Uh, so I set up the one, the first cross, and I'll be doing the second cross tomorrow. Okay. And then I set, I'm setting up the first cross. I like to work on a bunch of different things at once. As, as anyone in the lab will tell you, I like having, we have, you know, I counted the other day, we have 20 ongoing projects. And um, while that can be a lot to juggle, it really makes it interesting to come into the lab every day and talk to my students and find out some new cool thing that they found. So, uh, how's your, how's the analysis going with the STAMs? Uh, I finished, um, like, all of last week, and then because I'm putting together the slides, Rachel oh, okay. said she'll pick up. She is a great role model for female scientists. She kind of, in a way, has it all, I guess. She has a family, she's successful, she's great, and she, I just love working for her. I can't say enough positive things about her, but she also really... Um, fosters independence, which is important for what we do because my goal is to eventually run my own laboratory. And she really lets me think outside the box, pursue whatever project I'm interested in, and tells you to just kind of run with it. And she's not afraid of new things either. It's not a medical school. And so what this means for me is that I can work on something that seems somewhat esoteric, that eventually leads back to public health, but you're not being forced to do something that has immediate, really immediate um, practicality. And that's great because we never would have ended up studying the things that we do study if that had been the demand from the beginning. And so having that sort of academic freedom that you get at a place like Princeton where it's not a medical school, I actually think is really helpful for doing, ending up doing medical research in fact. And the students all come in with various backgrounds too. And so. Um, at this point, because they develop the assay that they use, it's a little embarrassing, but you know, they're the experts in what we do. I have the big picture idea, but they're the ones who know how to do every single thing. So when someone asks me how, you know, like nitpicky questions, I always say, well, you need to ask Rachel that question because she knows exactly how you do this. So they're the experts really at this point. Because I just chunked the AWC, and oh. the plate I wrote on it was for that yeah. one's it. My crab? No, it's right here. I remember reading that, you know, there was someone in Colleen's life who really encouraged her to take that next step further to realize and fulfill her self-potential. And I think that she's done the same with me by inviting me to work in her lab. And I don't really come from, a, I, both my, no one in my family does anything related to research. And I feel like she's kind of helped me realize that like this is something that I could really see myself doing in future years and something that I've come to love. She really... I think emphasizes work-life balance a whole lot and she does not like keep us on a timetable, time clock and she understands that you know you need your time to do things. We have plenty of lab members with families and she totally supports that and has been nothing but supportive. One of the surprising things I guess about doing this job has been how wonderful it is, has been to be able to have kids during this time. So a lot of women, I think, talk themselves out of doing science or becoming professors when they're in graduate school or doing their postdoc. And in fact, actually, it's a really flexible job. And so it's been pretty uh, reasonable to try to do all of that at once. And so I just wanted to convey, because I think women get a lot of discouraging information, and I would like to convey to the graduate students and postdocs that actually it really is a reasonable path to take, and they should stay in science. Being excited about your question is really the most important thing. And it's hard at the end of graduate school, right? There's this, I always tell the students, right, you know, you start in all excited and then things start working about your fourth year and then you get tired around your fifth year. And that's normal, right? I always tell them that, you know. But they shouldn't get discouraged. And almost always they have a ton of data at that point and you're almost like pushing them out of the nest, right? They, they should be sick of you because it's time for them to go elsewhere. It's part of the process. But um, they, 
I hope that they always retain this idea that there's something fun to study and there's something exciting and that's what I mostly want them to learn.